Wolf Hall is a 2009 novel by English author Hilary Mantle, deriving its name from the Seymour family's seat of Wolf Hall, or Wolf Hall, in Wiltshire. Spanning the period of 1500 to 1535, it portrays the rise to power of Thomas Cromwell in the court of Henry VIII. The novel won the Man Booker Prize and the National Book Critics Circle Award. The book is the first in a trilogy, with Bring Up the Bodies and the Mirror and the Light following it. In the year 1500, in the village of Putney, England, a young Thomas Cromwell has just been beaten up by his father Walter, the town's blacksmith. This beating was ruthless, and it spurs him to leave his home and become a soldier. In 1527, we find Thomas Cromwell working for the Cardinal of York, called Wolsey. Cromwell was a soldier in France and a banker in Florence but is now practicing law in England. The Cardinal is an advisor of King Henry, and he tells Cromwell that the King wants to cancel his marriage with Queen Catherine since she has been unable to give him a son. The Cardinal suspects that the Queen will fight this procedure, so he informs Cromwell. He returns home afterward, and his wife Liz says they received a package from Germany, which Cromwell knows to be one of the banned books he ordered. He finds it essential to be informed of the ideas of Luther and Tyndale, but people like Lord Chancellor Thomas More feel people that read these books should be burned for heresy. Liz has also heard a rumor of the king ordering an emerald ring for a woman that's not his wife. The cardinal opens a court case since Henry claims the marriage to be incestuous since she was first married to his brother. Still, the queen contends that their marriage was never consummated, so it is perfectly valid. Wolsey advises the king, much to his dismay, that even if the court rules in his favor, the queen could appeal to the pope to overrule the decision. The pope is a prisoner of Emperor Charles, Catherine's nephew, so even an appeal from his king won't work. He, therefore, tries to bundle a delegation of cardinals in France to pass a resolution while the pope is in jail, but his plan doesn't succeed. Liz dies when the cardinal is gone to France when she's infected with the sweating sickness. In 1529 Wolsey devises another plan to prove that the queen wasn't a virgin when she married, but the court hearings turn into entertainment, and true to the prediction of Stephen Gardiner, the king's master secretary, this second failure proves the end of Wolsey, as the king dismisses him. He is forced to leave his London house and all his possessions are divided between the Dukes of Norfolk and Suffolk. Cromwell finds it sad to see the demise of his cardinal since they're very fond of each other. Cromwell gets a seat in Parliament and uses this to help the cardinal. He also gets to speak with the king, and the king likes him, and they spend more time together afterward, much to the dislike of the Dukes of Norfolk and Suffolk. When the king then confides in Cromwell that he misses Wolsey, he's hopeful, but the cardinal is forced to leave, and the cardinal gives him his turquoise ring as they weep. A year onwards, Henry is still married to the queen. Cromwell has been slowly making more of a name for himself and has even been invited into some meetings of the king's council. Then suddenly, Harry Percy, the Earl of Northumberland, arrests Wolsey, bringing him to London. He dies during this trip, and Cromwell suspects he poisoned himself. The king grows more and more fond of Cromwell, as he also admires his loyalty to Wolsey, who was, after all, his adviser and friend for years. He becomes the first person, not from nobility who's sworn into the king's counsellors. In 1531, Lady Anne Boleyn is seen more and more in the king's company. The king sends Cromwell to inform Catherine that she's being moved to a new residence. The king also plans to separate his daughter, Mary, from his wife. The quiet Jane Seymour, whom Anne Boleyn frequently mocks, gets the compassion of Cromwell, and he buys her a present. In the meantime, Thomas More is growing more active in torturing and burning heretics, people who read or say anything against the Catholic Church. 
Cromwell schemes to help some of these people, but the king says he won't interfere. When the parliament members meet in 1532, they propose a bill that will stop the flow of money to the Pope and make Henry head of the church. Stephen Gardiner, now Bishop of Winchester, opposes this bill, which makes Henry furious, but Cromwell makes him realize he can't act like a dictator since this will hurt his image in Europe. But even despite the attempts of Moore and Gardiner, the bill passes and Cromwell is named Keeper of the Jewel House which gives Cromwell control over the revenues of the kingdom. Thomas More is stripped of his title and replaced by Audley, who was Speaker of the House before, thanks to the interference of Cromwell. The king gives the title of Marquess of Pembroke to Anne as he and his court prepare to travel to France to win the backing of King Francois for his marriage. When they stop over in Canterbury, they encounter Eliza Barton, who prophesizes that if the king marries Anne, his reign won't last longer than seven months, as he will be struck by lightning. The king is upset, and only Cromwell can calm him again. While in France, Cromwell hears that Henry and Anne have said their vows and are sharing a bed. In 1533, Cromwell's importance and influence are immense, as he even mediates between Anne and Henry when they argue. He starts working on a bill that makes it illegal to bypass Henry and appeal to the Pope since Anne must be crowned queen as soon as possible, as she is pregnant. He's also given Thomas Cranmer the post of Archbishop of Canterbury so that the Church will approve his divorce from Catherine. The bill is passed, and Anne is finally crowned queen, and she goes to Greenwich to hopefully give birth to a son but she gives birth to a daughter, which they call Elizabeth. Cromwell and Cranmer assure the king that they still have time for more children. She soon becomes pregnant again, and she asks Cromwell to make a bill called the Act of Succession that stipulates that Elizabeth will inherit the throne if Henry has no sons. In the meantime, Eliza Barton has been brought to London by Cromwell. She finally confesses to having no powers of prophecy and that certain people used her predictions is a form of manipulation. Cromwell writes a bill against her, and both the Queen and King insist on including Moore's name, although Cromwell protests. At the last minute, thanks to the pleas of the King's counsellors, his name is removed. Barton is hanged for treason. When Thomas More is asked to swear upon the act of succession, he says he can't since it would damn his soul. He can't be persuaded and is put in prison for treason. Cromwell finds it irritating that he was only nearly saved from the Barton Bill and now wants to make himself a martyr. He feels More's lofty ideas of the church are misplaced and that he forgets he killed many people himself to uphold them. Cromwell is first given the title of Master Secretary, then Master of Rolls, culminating in a newly created title of Vice Gerent in Spirituals, with the power to close down monasteries and transfer money to the monarchy. It gives Cromwell a sense of achievement and contentment that he's accomplished so much. More further refuses to swear to the Act of Succession or Act of Supremacy, and the King and Anne want Cromwell to find a legal way to execute him. Cromwell has him write a statement that he believes that Parliament doesn't have jurisdiction over spiritual matters, showing he's a believer of papal law, and on this ground, he's beheaded. Anne has a miscarriage, to Henry's dismay, and the court is preparing to travel west. Since Cromwell has a few free days, he stops by the Seymours at Wolf Hall. If you have a suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.